the second day of the three days course is over a very short course of three days but a very serious course good that you worked very seriously one day anapana and you worked seriously one day vipassana tomorrow also you will be working seriously to make best use of the time the opportunity it will help you to refresh your practice of anapana and vipassana and it will help you to refresh your understanding of the theory theory of the practice of anapana and vipassana you work with anapana that means you work to develop your awareness of the natural breath bare breath pure breath at times of course when you found it difficult to feel the natural breath if it was too soft for you too subtle for you then you were permitted to take a few slightly hard breathing intentional breathing conscious breathing but ultimately you have to develop awareness of the natural breath how soft it may be how subtle it may be being old students it must be very clear to you why you work on natural breath why you work on bare breath nothing but breath no verbalization no visualization no imagination verbalization of a name or a mantra would certainly help you to concentrate your mind imagining the form of or shape visualization of a form or shape of someone in whom you have got great devotion will certainly help you to get your mind concentrated but it will take you off the track working with pure breath you started working to train your mind to observe the nature the natural truth not artificial truth natural truth pertaining to yourself what you call yourself the physical structure the mental structure the combination of the two breath is deeply connected with both the mind and the matter if you had worked with verbalization your mind would have got concentrated but you would have missed the subtler reality pertaining to the body and the mind which you started experiencing at the level of sensation so also if you had worked with visualization or imagination your mind would have got concentrated easily but you would have missed subtler realities pertaining to your mind and body at the level of the sensations it was for this purpose that you worked with bare breath 
nothing but breath, natural breath, normal breath. And this helps you to realize subtler realities at the level of sensations. Today you started working with the sensations throughout the body. And now, being old student, you understand why you work with these body sensations. Body sensations are again strongly connected to both the physical structure as well as the mental structure. The sensations are on the body, but they are felt by the mind. So observing the sensations you started observing the reality of both mind and matter. Moreover, practicing vipassana at the level of sensations, body sensations, you started working at the deepest level of your mind. Being old students, at the experiential level, now it is so clear to you that the deepest level of the mind is constantly in contact with the body sensations, day and night, asleep or awakened. It is constantly in contact with the body sensations and it has become a slave of the behavior pattern and habit pattern that it keeps on reacting blindly to these body sensations. If the sensations are found to be pleasant, it reacts blindly with craving and clinging. If the sensations are found to be unpleasant, it reacts blindly with aversion and hatred. This has become the habit pattern of the deepest level of the mind. All other defilements, they are product of these two, craving, aversion, craving, aversion, lobha, dosa, lobha, dosa, or raga, dvesha, raga, dvesha. When you change the habit pattern of this deepest level of the mind, you are changing the entire mental structure. Because the entire mental structure is guided, is influenced by this deepest level of the mind. This is the root. It influences the entire structure of the mind. There are many techniques of meditation, techniques not merely to concentrate the mind, but techniques even to purify the mind. But nearly all of them work with the surface level of the mind. What in the Western Psychological terminology is called conscious mind. The Buddha called it paritta mind, a very small portion of the mind, the surface of the mind. You can purify this surface of the mind by suppressing the impurities that arise or by diverting your attention to something which keeps the mind calm or giving some suggestion to the mind which helps this surface level of the mind to become calm, 
quiet, get purified also. But the deeper level remains untouched. It continues to roll in the old habit of blind reactions, reactions of craving, aversion, craving, aversion. Although it is good at least to purify the surface of the mind, the so-called conscious mind, some benefit is definitely achieved by purifying this surface of the mind. But you have not come out of your problems. The roots are still damaged. Unless the roots become healthy, the entire mental structure can never become healthy. For some time it will seem as if the surface level of the mind has become healthy, is free from defilements, is not agitated, is calm, is quiet, tranquil, peaceful. Because at the depth of the mind, there is a continuous reaction of impurities, of craving and aversion. Time and again, these impurities will come upon the surface and overpower the surface level of the mind also. The enlightened person finds out the truth, the truth pertaining to the entire physical structure, the truth pertaining to the entire mental structure. And that is why he finds, he finds out the root cause, the root cause of the misery. So long as one does not understand, does not realize, does not experience the root cause of the misery, one cannot eradicate this root cause and cannot get really liberated from all the misery. It is because of ignorance, avidya. Because of ignorance one keeps on reacting with craving and aversion keeps on generating sankharas after sankharas at the deepest level of the mind. And the Buddha finds this out and says, avidya pachaya sankhara, avidya pachaya sankhara. You generate sankhara because you remain ignorant. You remain ignorant as to what is happening at the deeper level of your mind. You remain ignorant that when you are reacting at the deeper level of the mind, you are generating misery for yourself. This is misery. Your reaction of craving and aversion is misery. This is cause of misery. And you can come out of this misery if you stop reacting. If you stop reacting at that depth of the mind, then you come out of the habit pattern. You change the habit pattern. There is no more ignorance. You are alert. You are attentive. You are awakened. Awakened at the deepest level of the mind. And you stop generating sankharas. When there is no avidya, there is no sankhara. And exploring the truth within the framework of the body, it becomes so clear that whenever you generate a sankhara of craving or aversion, you generate because you feel a sensation. You feel a sensation on the body. And the sensation on the body, feeling of the sensation on the body becomes a cause of your reacting with craving or aversion Vedana Pachaya Tanaha, Vedana Pachaya Tanaha. It becomes so clear to someone who practices Vipassana, that means someone 
who practices the technique of exploring the truth, not merely at the surface level of the mind, but at the deepest level of the mind, the truth as it is. By exploring the truth as it is, you reach the stage where you started experiencing sensations throughout the body, pleasant, unpleasant or neutral. And you started realizing that, look, the mind keeps on reacting to these sensations. So long as it continues to react to these sensations, it is multiplying misery, multiplying misery. Every reaction to these sensations, reaction of craving or reaction of aversion, is nothing but misery, misery. Misery. This is not to be accepted because the Buddha said so. This is not to be accepted because your teacher says so. This is not to be accepted because a particular scripture says so, or a particular tradition says so, or a particular sect says so. You accept it because you realize it, you experience it. How when you experience unpleasant sensations, your mind starts reacting with aversion, hatred, aversion, hatred. How when you start experiencing pleasant sensations, a flow of very subtle vibrations, your mind starts reacting with craving, clinging, craving, clinging. This habit pattern becomes clearer and clearer as you pass through the reality at the experiential level. It is not just a belief, it is not just a dogma, it is not just a sectarian philosophy, it is there, you are experiencing it. The technique has taken you to the stage where you experience that look there are sensations throughout the body, pleasant, unpleasant or neutral and look how the mind has a tendency to react to these sensations. Every time you react to the sensations, you build up tensions, you start tying knots, you become miserable, more and more miserable. The suffering is there. The cause of suffering is there. The deep-rooted cause of suffering is so clear. The way to come out of the suffering is also very clear. If you don't react, if you just accept the sensation as sensation and you observe its characteristic, its nature, you find that every sensation has the same nature, the same characteristic, the characteristic of arising and passing away, arising and passing away. This is what you have been realizing, you have been experiencing. When you come across a very solidified, intensified cross sensation, you find it as a reason. And because it is solidified, intensified cross sensation, it seems as if it is staying for some time. But then sooner or later, it has to pass away. It passes away. It doesn't stay forever. However unpleasant a sensation may be, it does not stay forever. However solidified, intensified a sensation may be, it does not stay forever. It does pass away. So it arises. It stays for some time, but ultimately passes away. And you have come across very subtle sensations, very subtle vibrations, wavelets, wavelets. And you notice that every wavelet has the same characteristic. Arising, passing, arising, passing. That is why it is wavelet. It arises, it passes away. It arises, it passes away. With great rapidity. With very high frequency, very high velocity. Arising, passing, arising, passing. The characteristic remains the same. Whether the sensation is gross or the sensation is subtle, whether the sensation is unpleasant or pleasant, it makes no difference. The characteristic remains the same, arising, passing, arising, passing. 
again out of ignorance you start identifying yourself with the sensation i am feeling this sensation this is my sensation i am feeling this unpleasant sensation my body is aching paining because of this unpleasant sensation i mind i mind and because of this you have to react because you are under the influence of ignorance avidya avidya whenever there is avidya there is bound to be sankhara avidya parchaya sankhara avidya parchaya sankhara as you continue to practice this madness of i mind has to go away as you proceed on the path correctly as you should proceed you find that your ego gets dissolved dissolved this false ego imaginary ego i i as you keep on exploring the truth pertaining to the entire physical structure as you keep on exploring the truth pertaining to the entire mental structure you find that there is a constant change going on it is constantly in a flux in a flow over which you have no control masses of subatomic particles arising passing away passing away arising passing away tiny little wavelets arising passing away arising passing away tiny little bubbles arising passing away arising passing away no i there is no hard core which remains static to which you can say this is i this does not change everything everything is in a melting pot no final product which does not change constantly changing constantly changing at the experiential level you understand that there is no i for conventional purpose one has to use these words i mine i mine dealing with people one has to use these words i mine you you are he his she her etc but the actual level at the ultimate level there is no i and so also there is no mine if there is something to which you say mine you must have control over it you must have possession over it which you don't have things are just happening you can't control them you can't stop them they arise they pass away you don't want them to pass away you want them to remain eternal they don't remain eternal you have no control over them so what mind it becomes so clear there is no i there is no mind the ignorance of i the ignorance of mind as it gets dissolved your habit of reacting with craving and aversion gets dissolved too and when you come out of your habit of reaction of craving and aversion you are coming out of your misery you started realizing the truth of the misery there is agitation constant agitation within the framework of the body constant agitation because constantly you keep on reacting so the agitation is there the misery is there the suffering is there you are realizing it and you are also realizing the cause because you are reacting out of ignorance you are reacting in craving you are creating an aversion because you are so ignorant you don't know what you are doing how very harmful it is for you you are reacting because you are not ignorant you are so ignorant you are not understanding the fact that it's so essentially the entire physical and mental structure the combination of the two which is constantly changing is so substanceless so essentialless as you practice more and more it becomes so clear it is so essentially 
too substanceless. It keeps on changing. There is no meaning to generate craving for something which is so ephemeral, which is so impermanent. Look, it arises, it passes away. It arises, it passes away. So also there is no meaning to react with aversion towards something which is so ephemeral, so impermanent. It arises, it passes away. It arises, it passes away. The more and more you develop this wisdom, not merely at the intellectual level, not merely at the devotional level, <coughs> but at the actual level, at the experiential level, then you are coming out of your ignorance. You are progressing on the path of liberation, path of purification, because you are breaking the habit pattern of your mind. At the deepest level, you are breaking the habit pattern of your mind. Whatever you started practicing, it is not just a rite or a ritual. It is not at all a rite or a ritual. It is not a religious ceremony. It is not something being done to please some invisible power over the skies. It is a rite of effort to understand the reality pertaining to yourself. It's the right of her to understand how misery arises and how this habit of generating and multiplying misery can be changed, can be eradicated, and how you can really come out of misery. For this purpose you started working with the body sensation. The same theory you could have understood nearly at the intellectual level by listening to discourses, by reading books. You could have intellectualized them by pondering over it, thinking over it, rationalizing it. It all looks so logical, so rational. But that alone would not have helped. It would have helped only a certain part of your mind, just a small part of the mind. But the vast majority of the mind would have kept on rolling, rolling in ignorance. But because you started working with sensation, feeling sensation means you start experiencing. When you feel sensation, you experience. It is not merely intellectual game. It is not just a devotional game. You are experiencing it. Look, there are sensations. You are feeling. You are feeling those sensations, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. And at that level you are understanding that, look, the habit pattern of the mind is to react with craving, with aversion, a role in ignorance. So you are panya, your wisdom is bhavana maya panya. At the experiential level, you are developing your wisdom. And we personalize for that purpose only. Otherwise, there was no use for you are joining a course 10 days or 3 days or longer courses even. Because you experience the truth, you explore the truth at the experiential level, then you really make a change in the habit pattern of your mind. You make a change in the habit pattern of the mind at the deepest level of the mind the so-called unconscious mind, which is never unconscious. It is always conscious, conscious to the body sensation, but it is so blind that it keeps on reacting to these body sensations, and thus it keeps on generating misery and keeps on multiplying misery. And this is what you have started coming out, coming out of. You are observing the sensation and you are not reacting to them. Not that all the time, when you practice Vipassana, you are so wise that you don't react to these sensations. But certainly a change has started. Sitting for one hour, you get at least a few moments when you are aware of the sensations and you are not reacting to them. You are aware of the sensations and you are not reacting to them. You just keep on understanding it is an itch, it is an itch, it is impermanent, let me see how long it lasts. 
look it as a reason, let me see how long it lasts and look it has passed away. It is a reason, it has passed away, it is a reason, it has passed away. Those moments when you are with the understanding of anicca at the experiential level and you are equanimous with those sensations are wonderful moments for you. Those are the moments when you have really broken the habit pattern of your mind, maybe for a few moments, does not matter, the beginning is made. These very few moments will turn into few seconds, will turn into few minutes. It all depends how you work, how seriously you work. You start changing the habit pattern of your mind. You stop generating new sankharas. Vedana, Pachaya, Tanaha. The old habit pattern of the mind was to react with craving, with aversion, whenever there is a sensation on the body. Whenever you feel a sensation on the body, you react with craving or aversion. In Tanaha, you have both craving as well as aversion. Now, a few moments, at least a few moments you get when you feel the sensations and yet you don't react and you understand the law, the nature, the Dhamma, Anicca, Anicca, Anicca. That means your Panya, your Bhavana Maya Panya. Then these very sensations which had become the cause of your misery now these very sensations become a tool for you to come out of your misery. You are aware of the sensations and yet you don't react. You are equanimous. You are equanimous. Then the wheel of misery, the wheel of misery turns into wheel of Dhamma, the wheel of liberation. The moment you are not reacting to the sensations, and you are understanding that the sensation is impermanent. Anicca, anicca, this is Panya. So the Vedana generates Panya. All these days the sensations, the Vedana was generating ignorance. And because of that you were reacting, reacting with craving and aversion. Now these very sensations generate wisdom and you remain equanimous. Wisdom and you remain equanimous. So Vedana Pachaya Panya. Instead of Vedana Pachaya Tanaha, now it is turned Vedana Pachaya Panya. The wheel of misery has turned into wheel of liberation. You have started changing the habit pattern of your mind. When you stop generating a sankhara, sankhara of craving or aversion, then some deep sankhara of the past, which you had accumulated at the deepest level of your mind, now according to the law of the nature, it has come, it has to come to the surface of the mind. You are experiencing an unpleasant sensation. The old habit pattern was that whenever you experience an unpleasant sensation, you react with aversion. You react with hatred. Now you have not done so. The unpleasant sensation is there and yet you have not reacted. At the deep level of your mind, the habit pattern was to react with aversion to the unpleasant sensation so your accumulated old sankharas of aversion are shaken. One or the other will come on the surface. Because of the sensation, unpleasant sensation felt by you, you have shaken one of the old sankharas of aversion, it comes on the surface and you continue to remain equanimous. You continue to remain equanimous. This old sankhara which has come on the surface loses its strength, becomes weak, weak and passes away. Another deep accumulated sankhara of aversion will come on the surface and you still remain equanimous, equanimous, it will lose its strength, 
it will become weaker and weaker, feebler and feebler and will pass away. Like this layers after layers of old accumulated sankharas will keep on coming on the surface and they keep on passing away so long as you are equanimous with the sensation they keep on passing away because those sankharas are related to the sensation. They come on the surface, the sensation is there, but you don't react to it. Then they lose all their strength and they pass away, they lose all their strength and they pass away. The law of nature is such. The old habit pattern was that you continuously keep on generating aversion, 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 aversion. That means you are continuously charging your battery with aversion, with aversion, with aversion. Now you stop charging the battery. You stop charging the battery with aversion and the law of nature is such, when you stop charging the battery, it, it starts getting discharging. Every moment when you are not charging it, it is getting discharged. That means the stock of aversion deep inside has started passing away. Layer after layer come on the surface and pass away, layer after layer come on the surface and pass away. As many layers as are eradicated, that much you are liberated from misery. Because every sankhara of aversion within you is nothing but misery. So also when you come across pleasant sensations, the old habit pattern was to react with craving clinging and now even for a few moments you are not reacting with craving, you are not reacting with clinging, then old sankharas of craving and clinging will start coming up on the surface, you are experiencing the present sensations, yet you are not reacting, you are equanimous, you understand they are impermanent, they are impermanent, they are impermanent, then layers after layers of the old stock will come on the surface, get peeled off, get peeled off, get peeled off, as many of the sankharas got peeled off that much your, li your misery is gone, you have liberated yourself and it becomes so clear to a practitioner of Vipassana, it becomes so clear that no one else can liberate me, I have to liberate myself, no one else can liberate me. So this mad belief of depending on this person or that person, this being or that being, this power or that power, please liberate me, please liberate me, that madness goes away. I have to liberate myself. One does not generate ego because of this, that I am so powerful I will liberate myself, not that. In all humbleness one understands one's responsibility. This is my responsibility to liberate myself. I am responsible for this mad habit pattern of blind reaction of craving and aversion. Every moment at the depth of my mind, I am a prisoner of this habit pattern of craving, aversion, craving, aversion. None else is responsible for that. No outside power, no invisible power. Which invisible power is entrusted in making everybody miserable in this universe? Out of one's own ignorance, one keeps on getting entangled in this habit pattern of constantly craving, constantly aversing towards the present sensations, the unpleasant sensations. One has to develop one's own wisdom one's own understanding and come out of this habit pattern. One understands one's responsibility. I have to work out my own liberation. I have to work out my own salvation. Someone can show me the path. One who has walked over the path can just guide me, well this is the path. No one will carry me on the shoulder to the final goal of full liberation. Nobody can do that. Someone can only show the path with all the love, with all the compassion. I have to walk over the path. Every step on the path. I have to take every step on the path. 
Of course, the Vipassana meditator also understands, also understands at the experience a level that when I start taking step on the path of liberation, all the Dhamma forces start helping me. Again, this is a law of nature, no magic, no miracle. It becomes so clear to a practitioner of Vipassana that when I generate craving and aversion, that means I am generating my bondage, my misery, then the vibrations that I generate because of craving, because of aversion, throughout the universe, wherever such vibrations are, I get tuned up with those vibrations. And such vibrations of the entire universe start supporting my vibration of craving and aversion. It strengthens my vibration of craving and aversion. And that is how I keep on rolling, rolling, rolling in this habit pattern of craving and aversion. Similarly, the law of nature is such that when I generate vibrations which are free from craving, vibrations which are free from aversion, vibrations of equanimity, vibrations of purity, then such vibrations of equanimity, such vibrations of purity of all the saintly persons of the universe, not only present but even past, the vibrations are there throughout the universe. One gets tuned up with these vibrations of purity and one starts getting all the support, the strength from these vibrations and one works most seriously, most successfully. This is how these invisible forces start helping you, law of nature. You start helping yourself and you find that you started getting help from everywhere, from every quarter. You start harming yourself and you find that you start getting help from every quarter to harm yourself more and more. Law of nature is such. It will become so clear, so clear. With this understanding, one, one will start realizing it is my responsibility to change the habit pattern of my mind. The habit pattern which is involved in generating vibrations of negativity, vibrations of impurity, vibrations which multiply my misery, which increase my bondage, I have to come out of this habit pattern of generating such vibrations. I stop generating such vibrations and the equanimous mind will start generating vibrations which are pure, which are free from craving, which are free from aversion. And I start getting support from everywhere. And the few moments that I get when I remain really equanimous at the deepest level of the mind, will start increasing, increasing. These few moments will become few seconds, few seconds will become few minutes, maybe few hours. Like this you change the habit pattern of the mind. You have to work. Every Vipassana meditator understands, I have to work. I have to understand the law of nature, the Dhamma, Universal Dharma, which governs the entire universe, animate, inanimate, which does not differentiate between one community and the other, between one sex and the other, between one caste and the other, between one sect and the other. It is so universal, so universal. One becomes more and more confident at the experiential level that I am on the right path. I am not getting myself entangled in any organized religion. I am not getting myself converted from an organized religion to another organized religion. All these organized religions are bondages. They are barriers for the real progress on the path of liberation. This will become so clear. Sectarianism and Dhamma cannot go together. Dhamma is infinite, unlimited. 
sectarianism will bound you to limitations. You can't proceed further. When you're out of sectarianism, then you will find you have started understanding pure Dhamma, universal Dhamma. Then you will keep on progressing on the path without any barrier, without any limitation. Again, for which you have to work, merely understanding at the intellectual level, merely understanding it at the intellectual level, merely accepting it at the devotional level, emotional level, is not sufficient. One has to work, and work very hard. Coming for a three days course, it just helps you to refresh your practice. It just helps you to refresh your understanding of the law of nature. But then the whole life is here. You have to work. Work very hard. Very hard. The forces of ignorance are so strong, they will try to overpower you. Day and night they will keep you overpowered. You have to develop your own power your own force of wisdom, dhamma, enlightenment. And you don't allow these powers, these forces of ignorance to overpower you. You have to fight out your own battle. It's a lifelong battle. Your entire mental structure has remained a slave of the ignorance, the forces of ignorance. And you have to bring it out from ignorance and establish it in wisdom. For which you have to work. You have to work. No one else can work for you. No one else can liberate you. You have to liberate yourself. Make best use of the time. Make best use of the facilities. Make best use of the opportunity. Make best use of the wonderful dhamma, the wonderful technique. To liberate yourself. To come out of all the bondages, the shackles, the chains. And enjoy the LP. Enjoy real happiness. May all of you enjoy real peace, real happiness, real harmony, real harmony. Sat. Take rest for about five minutes and then we start again. Take rest for about five minutes.